What's good everybody? Welcome to my first video in this explaining physics series. We're going to start off by talking about some electromagnetic induction because it's honestly one of my favorite topics in physics. So without further ado, let's get right into the video. Now the textbook definition of electromagnetic induction is that it's the production of an electromotive force across an electrical conductor in a changing magnetic field. Now, my problem with textbooks is that they give you a lot to digest all in one sitting, so let's just break it down in more easy to understand terms. So electromagnetic induction, the topic of this video, is the production or the creation of an electromotive force. Now, that's a weird word. What does it mean? Well, electro means relating to electrons while motive means motion. So electromotive means electrons in motion. And all that is, is electricity. Electricity is a bunch of electrons in motion and electricity can be used to do a lot of cool things. Now let's keep going. So electromotive force across an electrical conductor. Now a conductor, all that is, is it's some material that allows electricity to flow through easily. Now, an example of a really good conductor is copper wire, and that's why we use it in so many different applications. Now, if we take a look at this drawing of this wire right here, the actual conductive part is the copper wire that's actually sticking out from the end. The colorful part around it is an insulator. It prevents the flow of electrons, and it's good to have it around each individual wire to prevent them from kind of shorting out or allowing electrons to jump from one wire to another and causing some, maybe some burns or explosions, who knows. Now let's finish up the definition. Across an electrical conductor in a changing, that's crucial right there, magnetic field. Now a magnetic field is just like the invisible region around a magnet, which can cause magnetic forces on different types of objects. Now everybody, please welcome the first guest of this show, the bar magnet. Now it doesn't have a name yet, so in the comments, just let me know what we should name it because it's gonna keep on coming in future videos because the magnet is such a crucial concept in physics and it's such an amazing one too. For now, I'm gonna call it Maggie, but we can change it later on. Now to finally summarize everything, all electromagnetic induction is, is the creation of some force that produces electricity in a conductor whenever we have some sort of changing magnetic field present. And this changing is super important. If all we had was Maggie right here, just sitting still around some sort of wire, then no electricity is gonna be formed. Maggie either has to increase or decrease its strength, or it has to kind of change its direction around that conductor to create that electricity. Now, one of the big things that interests me about physics is how the heck did people even come up with this stuff or discover it in the first place? So let's go with a quick history lesson taught by yours truly. So right here, we have a guy named Michael Faraday, and he's one of the most prominent figures in physics. In the 1830s, he did an experiment which basically proved that this changing magnetic field created some sort of electricity in a conductor. Now, of course, there's those 10 hour documentaries which explains every single detail about what he did, but I think my explanation right now is gonna wipe all those out. So basically, one day, as you can see in this picture right here, Michael Faraday had a bar magnet in his hand. So what about we just get Maggie from before and put it in his hand. There we go. Now over here, he put a loop of wire. And as we said, wire is conducting. So, so far everything's looking so good. We got a magnet and we got a wire. So what did Faraday do next? Well, he got Maggie and threw it through the loop. And what he noticed is that as Maggie went through the loop, he created electricity through the loop. Boom. And electricity can be used to do so many things. So this was a profound discovery. Now, how did this produce electricity? Well, Maggie has magnetic field lines going around it, and those permeate through infinite space. It's just that the magnetic field lines are stronger around Maggie, the closer you are to Maggie. Now, as Maggie was getting closer and closer to the loop, the loop itself started feeling more and more of the magnetic field lines. And then as the magnet eventually went through and went away from it, then the magnetic field lines started getting less and less stronger. And that changing kind of magnetic field strength basically led to this electricity, this electromotive force, which produces electricity around the wire. Boom, amazing. Now the cool stuff does not stop there. We got so much more to discover. 
So what Faraday discovered is that if you got a bar magnet, moved it through some electrical conductor, you could create some electrical current. Well, what if we don't use a magnet? What if we use two coils of wire? Now you might be saying a nine sign. How are we going to be doing this? That doesn't make sense. We need a magnet. That's what the definition said. All right. Give me a second. Let me cook. So what we see here are two coils of wire. Now this is similar to the loop that we saw up here, but it's just now multiple loops on top of each other. So what does this do? Now the loop on the left is connected directly to a battery. Now, a battery provides a direct flow of electrons around the circuit. Now let's introduce the second character of the series, the electron. For now, we're going to name him Eli, but in the comments, tell me what we should name the electron. And the electron, it should have an amazing name because electrons were on everything in electrical engineering, physics, every chemistry, you name it. All right, so what's going to happen in the left loop is that the battery is going to start pushing these electrons around and around this loop in a circle, repeatedly and repeatedly. Of course, there's going to be much more electrons going around, but hopefully this one will kind of simplify the process. So this will repeatedly happen and happen. Now, the crazy thing is, is that as those electrons go around the loop, they create a magnetic field. This is one of the most crazy concepts in physics. When electrons go around loops, they create magnetic fields around it. The electron goes around and around and around and around and back, around and around and around and around, and that creates a magnetic field around those loops. And that's what these kind of blue circles are. Those are the magnetic field lines. Now, how is that possible? Electricity is creating magnetic fields. Two seemingly different concepts are actually intertwined. Crazy. All right, so what can we do with this? We now have some magnetic fields, but the thing is, this is a constant magnetic field. It's not changing. You just have this constant flow of electrons. Nothing's happening. You're just creating one magnetic field with a certain strength. So what should we do to change that magnetic field? Well, you can use the handy dandy old move around method. Just bring it back and forth, back and forth, close and away from the loop on the right. Now, as that changing magnetic field is experienced by that loop, well, our boy Eli, probably it's clone because it's now in another loop. It's not the same Eli. It's going to be Eli version two is going to be created in this loop. Depending on how the magnetic field changes, the electrons are going to flow in a specific direction. But the important part is that we can use two coils, one connected to a battery, move it around and create electricity in another coil. Crazy. I'm telling you, it was just like magic. Electrical engineering, just physics in general, magic. All right, so just for a quick add-on, just to hopefully cement this amazing concept, I kind of redrew the two coils on the top down below, but the one on the right is now connected to a light bulb. And for the left, instead of drawing all those coils, I kind of simplified it and put Maggie there because that's all we're kind of doing. The electrons flowing around those loops, creating a magnetic field that's constant. Well, Maggie's just a bar magnet with a constant magnetic field. Now, all we have to do is move this back and forth, back and forth, and the loop on the right feels this changing magnetic field which creates electricity. So let's bring back Eli, of course, Eli version two, cause it's in a different loop. And as this right loop experiences that changing magnetic field, Eli version two is gonna be going around the circuit multiple times. And what does that do? This creates that electricity and electricity can be used to power on this light bulb. All right, one last thing, I promise. Say we don't want to actually move this back and forth, back and forth, because it's going to be annoying. You got someone here just moving it back and forth, back and forth like an idiot just to get some light bulb to move. What if we just want both to be standing still and that light to turn on? Well, what we can do is actually get both sides of the loop and connect it to our outlet. Now, do not actually go try this at home if you care about your or your family's lives. But let me land the concept. What happens if we connect it to the outlet is that the outlet runs on this thing called AC which is alternating current. The battery is DC, direct current. Now, if we look at our previous examples, the loop was connected to a battery and that battery is gonna create these electrons just going in one constant direction. And since it's going in one direction, it's only gonna create one stagnance in constant magnetic field that's not changing. Now, the thing about alternating current is that instead of these electrons just going in one direction, they're just gonna be oscillating back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Now, the big deal of these oscillating electrons is that they're going to create a magnetic field in the coils that changes in size and in direction. It's going to get small, flip directions, get big, get small again, flip directions, get big. The magnetic field is going to change just by the behavior of the electrons alone. And now, since we have this changing magnetic field, that's going to be experienced by the right loop, and that's going to create electricity without actually having to move the loop on the left. Crazy. 
Now, the big question y'all might be asking is, so what? We got physics, it's cool, all right, we can move on with our lives now. No, we can actually create some cool things and this is where electrical engineering comes into play, your boy right here. Now, here I've drawn out three different everyday technologies that we use in our day-to-day -day life that are run based on this physics concept. First up is the wireless charger and next is the electric toothbrush. These two are very similar in how they work. Basically, the charging station is one coil and that's connected to the outlet, which provides this alternating current, which creates that changing magnetic field. And then the appliance on the top, whether that be the phone or the toothbrush, kind of underneath it is another coil so it can experience that magnetic field that's changing and thus create electricity to charge the device. There you go. Now, the one on the right looks a bit more obscure. It's called a transformer, but we use it everywhere. Say you want to plug in something to the outlet, but you don't want the 120 volts AC that is connected to the outlet. You want something, say, like 12 volt DC. Well, a transformer basically gets that voltage and brings it down to a smaller voltage. Or say you wanted to go even higher than 120 volts AC, you could use a transformer to increase the output voltage. So let me draw it out to explain how this works. Basically, inside of a transformer, we have this weird rectangle looking thing. Well, on the left side, we're going to wind up a lot of coils and connect it directly to our power outlet, which we said is 120 volts AC or alternating current in America. Well, many of our everyday appliances run on much less than this 120 volts. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna wind up much less coils on the right side and connect it to whatever appliance it may be. Well, the many coils on the left, they're experiencing the alternating current from the power outlet. And this creates these magnetic fields that are changing. And those are going to be experienced by the coils on the right. And in turn, that's going to produce electricity in the coils on the right, just like we talked about before. But since there's much less coils on the right side, electricity can flow faster. And because of this, the voltage will decrease. It's kind of this inverse relationship between how fast the electrons flow and how much voltage is being produced. And that basically wraps up all the concepts we need to know for electromagnetic induction. Hopefully y'all were able to follow along and to enjoy and admire our natural world and how all this cool technology works.